breast buttons off the shaft his breath let him ride to railroad bells John Jackson's a great musician that very few people know about. He was awarded the National Heritage Fellow, which is the highest honor that can be bestowed upon an artist from our federal government. He's played all over the world. He's played for several presidents. That's pretty cool to have in your community. Not many people have that there. And so, you know, we're fortunate to have somebody like that. We should celebrate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you got this amazing choir here. Give him a big hand to open up this festival. Thank you very much. Most of the people that were part of this choir knew John Jackson and his family, and so we asked them to perform to sort of set the stage for the festival, and they did a fantastic job. From Culpeper, Virginia, we have the great great nephew of John Jackson, and his name is Jeffrey Scott. Let's see here. I think I'll kick this thing off with a little bit of the old Red River Blues. Goes a little something like this. <laughs> grandmother, which was his oldest sister out of the 14 of brothers and sisters, my grandmother moved to Culpeper, which is just over the hill a few miles, 
and uh, she worked for a real prominent family down there, and she uh, read, she was able to read and write, and she taught all of her other brothers and sisters how to read and write, and they thought it was the grandest thing when she bought Uncle Johnny his first guitar for $6.50 out of a Sears and Roebuck catalog, and then they started making big money, and they ended up buying a record player, and, and they would buy records every time the door-to-door -door salesman would come around, and they would buy albums and stuff. They didn't know whose record it was or nothing else. These records, it might be Jimmy Rogers, it could be the Carter family, Delmore Brothers, you name it. They bought all these records up in the mountain here to the Jackson household, and they would buy them. And they didn't have pictures on albums back then. All it was was words. And, they, and that's why Uncle Johnny was just so impressed. And he loved Jimmy Rogers. And that he was one of his favorite musicians, Jimmy Rogers. And that's how he learned, by listening to records. And then they was cutting the new road in. We call it the F.T. Valley Road. And uh, they had, the, uh, had convicts working on it. And they had dynamite, horses, wagons, buggies, you name it, picks, shovel. And every day, the convicts would come down to Great Grandmama Hattie's spring and get water and towed it back up. And Uncle Johnny noticed he had shackles on his legs and would be having one band on his arm. So he would go down there and talk to the man. He didn't realize he was a convict. He said, what do y'all do way up here in these sticks? He says, oh, we just play a little music and shoot marbles and pay, pitch a few horseshoes. He said, play music? He said, yeah. He said, my daddy got a guitar, my mama's got a guitar. He said, everybody got something in my household. He said, well, the next time you come down here, you bring your daddy's guitar and I'll show you something with it. And nobody ever knew this convict's name other than his name. Everybody called him Happy. And when Happy got free off the chain gang, and he was uh, come and stay a few times with my grandparents, and they would sit around and play music. And then, next thing you know, Happy was gone. The last they heard, he went down here to his called Double Toll Gates. Well, years ago, I'm told that's where the bus used to stop at. And he caught the bus, and nobody ever knew anything about him after that. Jeffrey Scott is John Jackson's nephew, and he's been sort of passed the torch to uh, carry on the tradition of the Piedmont Blues from John. So he's an accomplished musician that plays across the country, plays a Piedmont Blues style, an um, acoustic guitar, and also a banjo. Walking is much too slow. I'm going down into the bottoms, the place where I'm better known. You know, those blues men, they wrote songs about everything under the sun, all kinds of people, places, all kinds of food, all kinds of animals, you name it. And no, uh, I don't think there was a song that Uncle Johnny didn't know. He could put his hands on a country song, a bluegrass song, and right away it became a John Jackson song. Anyway, this is a song about a bear now called the Bearcat Blues. It goes a little bit like this. Won't stay home at night All they do is nothing but fuss and fight I'm gonna leave here running Walking is too slow I'm gonna leave here running Walking is too slow
this banjo to tell you the truth. It was made, the, the Africans invented the banjo and they made this instrument and they didn't know what to call it. And in the African language, the word banjo means confusion. So I'm gonna try to play a little bit of confusion up here for you today. So first song I learned goes a little like this. flood that went all the way from up in Vermont all the way down south. Uh, anyway, this is called Rising River Blues. Piedmont Blues musician. She's originally from Louisiana, but she now lives in the D.C. metropolitan area in Maryland. And she really is a fantastic Piedmont Blues musician. And she told me about Archie's Barbershop. And that's up in that area too. And that's where a lot of the current Piedmont Blues musicians get together and jam. So I'm looking forward to going up there one day and checking that scene out. Blue. Running 
past my door. Rising river blue, running past my door. Rivers rising like it never done before. Well, John Jackson was a very, uh, very generous and uh, uh, beloved man. I mean, I don't know anyone who's ever met him who didn't just think he was wonderful, because he was. And he was very encouraging. And when I first met him, he used to call me up to, uh, to play like like a couple of songs, not the whole set, but but you know he'd say, "Come on up and play, bring your guitar." So that was very good for me and encouraging. And I also used to go out and visit him, and he the way he didn't really teach like you know go step by step real slow or anything. The way John did, he would show you things. At least this is how it happened with me. So John would be sitting here, I'd be sitting here, and John would be playing. I don't know. <laughs> and then I'd sort of try and do half of what he did or even a quarter of what he did. But he had a, um, his um, granddaughter, Nisi, was about this big at the time. And she could sing along with every intricate break that John did. You know, John did a lot of really fancy, fancy guitar stuff. And she, little tiny thing, would, would sing right along with it, just, just along with the guitar. So um, I always remember that as a, as a really neat uh, kind of experience. So this is a song that John did. He did and this is not his arrangement because uh, I, that was kind of beyond me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I want to do this song kind of in honor of, of, of John. The day that you quit me, you never said a word. Nothing I done, it must be something you heard. I'm gonna move to Kansas City. That's you. I'm gonna move to Kansas City. That's you. I'm gonna move to Kansas City, honey, where they don't allow you. That's you too, if you want it. The day that you quit me, you should put me down. I wouldn't mind it so bad The news is all over town I'm gonna move to Kansas City I'm gonna move to Kansas City I'm gonna move to Kansas City Honey, where they don't allow you Make sure that train leaves out of that mobile yard Just sure that train leaves out of that mobile yard just sure as a train leaves out of that mobile yard Come shake a hand, tell your baby goodbye Come shake a hand, tell your baby goodbye Come shake a hand, tell your baby goodbye I'm sinking, look what a hole I'm in. You don't 
don't believe I'm sinking Look what a hole I'm in You don't believe I love you Look what a fool I've been Take me back Take me back She and John played together at lots of different festivals. They learned from each other. He taught her quite a bit about the Piedmont Blues and some of the licks he plays, and that's why it's really kind of special about those musicians. They're willing to share, freely share all their knowledge and then pass that knowledge along to the next group of musicians. Home, my definition of home was what my mother called home, and what she called home was Titusville, Alabama. So whenever she used that word home, that's what it had been, Titusville, Alabama. So I, I feel like being born in Washington that I spent a lot of time looking for connections that felt like home. And meeting Cora and John Jackson, that definitely uh, felt like home to me. And I felt a strong connection. Of course, at that, at that time, John had traveled all over the U.S. and uh, quite a bit throughout the world. and. He didn't know me from Adam, but he invited me to come and, and play some festivals with him. Uh, and the amazing thing, he had heard me and my terrible band play, and he still invited me. And that's, that's how uh, generous he was. Um, so here's a little bit of prayers and praises, a little bit of uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting with a little bit of Sunday morning second there. Phil Wiggins is another National Heritage fellow that played around the world, fantastic musician and a really good friend of John. And he and John Cephas used to play quite a bit together along with John Jackson. So all those guys are pretty close to Nick group and have been ambassadors of the Piedmont Blues for, for many, many years. And we hope to have them back soon to perform here in Rappahannock County again.
Thank you, and I just I want to just say too, um, I want to I want to thank the Virginia Humanities folks, formerly the Virginia Folk uh, Virginia Foundation for the Humanities. I, I've been around too long. I keep wanting to say that, but um, some of you, did any of you see that marker for John Jackson, the historic marker, as you were coming down 522? Yeah. Well, um, that was put up with the help of the Virginia Humanities. We did a series of, I think, six historical markers for bluesmen from Virginia, including John. So they do all kinds of incredible work, things that will stand the test of time, will be around long after we're gone. I'm very proud to have been involved with that. In fact, I met Jeffrey Scott at the uh, dedication of that marker. So um, thanks to them. Give them a big round of applause. Yeah. So um, there was a fellow who was a bookkeeper for a coal company, and he decided he was a songwriter. And he started sending out these um, lyric sheets to singers that he heard on 78 records that he liked. One of them was this fellow in Mississippi, John Hurt, who ended up recording it in the 1960s. And it's called Richland Woman Blues. <laughs> So I don't know, hopefully we'll get away with this one. Uh, Lewis Collins. In, in case you're wondering, I grabbed the wrong key harmonica. I was gonna pretend that that didn't really happen, but I might as well uh, confess. <laughs> Bobby G, a uh, local blues musician, was slated to play, but a hailstorm interfered and everybody had to run for cover. After the hailstorm was over, everyone pretty much packed up except Bobby G, and Bobby G unpacked all of his equipment, sound equipment, music equipment, his band stayed around and they played for another hour. And uh, The folks that were there really enjoyed the closing out the festival listening to a local blues musician. Thank you, Bobby G. Cemetery burger, a cemetery hack. Gonna take old Kelly to the graveyard, they gonna bring him back to let him ride. You railroad bill. Get ready. 
breast buttons off the shabby breast let him ride to railroad bell. Say some give a nickel and some give a dime. I wouldn't give five dollars for that gal of mine. Let her ride to railroad bell. Shot him to kill, let him ride. 